if you're like me, for many of you, the methods and special exams, and I guess further kind of applies, but I didn't study that subject, will probably be the last time you ever use that kind of maths in your life again, which is a little bit sad, honestly, for me. Um, but, you know, nonetheless, uh, today I'll be sharing with you guys how I prepared for those maths exams. <laughs> Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Darren, a first year medical student studying at Monash University here in Melbourne, Australia. For those of you who are new to the channel, I graduated last year with an ATAR of 99.95. I graduated with a 44 raw in specialist maths in year 12 and a 46 raw in methods both in year 11 and in year 12. For the full story, you can probably go to some of my other videos or my comments. Um, Anyway, uh, with math subjects, there is a general conception that you have to do a lot of practice questions, which is true, but doing them mindlessly means you just get really tired without gaining much at all. So today I'll be sharing with you guys how I prepared for those maths exams, um, plus with input from my friends who scored raw 50s and premiers awards as well. With the structure of today's video, it will be split into uh, two parts. In the first part, I'll be talking about practice exams. Um, in the second part, I'll be talking about your bound reference. Enjoy. Firstly, practice exams. Now with practice exams, I highly recommend you sit them under precise exam conditions. Um, it doesn't, I didn't really do it for every single exam. I didn't do it for some like Kilbaha or some of the practice exams because I felt they were a bit absurd and um, it's pretty tiring to do an exam all in one sitting. But all the VCAR exams, which I did, and I did all the VCAR exams, I sat them under proper exam conditions in some companies like NEEP or Impefinent as well. So proper exam conditions, what does this actually mean? What does this actually mean? So this means having correct timings. My teacher really instilled, my special um, tutor really instilled a sense of timing in me, which I applied to all my subjects, but it originated with specialist maths. That was a minute per mark, and I made sure to stick with that. I had my watch, I'd follow it rigorously, and I'd done so many practices that I sort of knew where I had to be up to um, at the end of you know question three, extended response, or by the end of um, uh, the sixth multiple choice question. Um, I roughly knew where I had to be. So what else does precise exam conditions mean. Um, it also means not using your notes for exam one. It means having all your stationery there that you would normally use. So I'd literally have out my um, protractor, my ruler, my pen, my pencil. I think I had a highlighter, I'm not too sure. But like having everything there that you will have in the actual exam as well. Uh, also, beforehand, I would sit there and not do anything for a couple minutes to sort of simulate at the start of the exam where everyone's sitting down and um, they're getting people into the gym so you don't really start the exam immediately as well and it's a pretty nerve-wracking period so I tried to simulate that. Also for reading time, um, what my tutor advised and what I did was to look through the extended response questions for exam two um, and for exam one just look through the questions and figure out a way to do them and I practiced that as well. So don't neglect reading time because otherwise you go into the exam you have no clue what you're doing with your reading time you sort of just fumble around. Um, yeah, so that's what's really important with timed um, exams and practice exams. You make the most of each one, you treat each one as the actual exam. Um, so when you get into the actual exam, it, it doesn't feel any different to what you've done in practice. Now, something to be aware of now, practice exams are good, but you need to make sure you learn from each practice exam. Now this can come in many forms. So my friend Ichen, who featured in the YouTube Live, I'm not sure whether I can link it, but hopefully it's up here. Um, he wrote the mistakes um, that he made on the front cover of each exam that he did and that helped him learn from his silly mistakes. So you really got to make sure you're learning, particularly if you're not aiming for say a raw 50 um, or a very high mark. What you're really trying to eliminate are those easy mistakes because you want to maximize your marks. Um, and the way you do that is by finding out patterns of weakness that you have, um, why you got certain questions wrong, was it misreading, was it not labeling you know, all the asymptotes and all the intercepts, uh, was it finding the, um, the gradient rather than the full tangent. Realizing these things, writing them down, memorizing them, noting them, however you want to do it, is extremely important for you to do well, both if you're aiming for a raw 50 and also if you're aiming for a, you know, a lower score as well, um, because in those cases, you know, you don't, the difficult questions, leave them. You just want to maximize all the marks you can get. Secondly, bound reference. 
What I recommend for bound reference is to get started, you know, straight after this video. Get started early, figure out what you want to have in your bound reference, and then get it prepared now and get it prepared like for throughout the next um, couple of weeks. The reason for this is that it's a source of stress for a lot of people. Um, it's comforting that you can bring it in, something you can bring in from home. And as a result, a lot of people stress over it. When it gets really close to the exam, they start like taping massive books together, writing down everything fervently. And I think that really distracts from your preparation. It makes you feel ner more nervous than um, is good for you. So I recommend thinking about what you need to do now. Maybe it's writing down difficult questions. Maybe it's writing down your silly mistakes. So what my tutor recommended me do and what I did was have my silly mistakes on the front cover, um, some you know, CAS difficulties in the, in the book, um, and also like CAS, um, what do you call it, CAS, like where you enter in the CAS for certain things like Eulers. Um, plus, you know, I had my difficult questions as well. I printed them all out at Officeworks and then um, got them binded. No, I printed them out at home and I got them all binded at Officeworks. And so I got that sorted probably a little late, like a day before the, um, a couple of days before the actual exam. Um, but you'd want to sort of get it done early and really feel organized and comfortable with your bound reference. And so that way it's sort of a little booster of confidence and a remover of stress when the exam comes. Thank you guys for tuning in to today's video. I hope it's helped clarify your questions about the maths exams and sort of shown you how I prepared with some input from my friends who you know, scored um, better than I did uh, in those subjects. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Um, if you want to direct any questions to you know, my friends as well, I'm happy to ask them for their input. Um, feel free to DM me, email me, um, all that jazz. Good luck for your math exams. I know it can be a source of stress because sometimes questions you either get it or you're not, and also because they're prerequisites. Um, but just keep working hard at it. Make sure you get better each exam, um, which might seem harder to do than say in English where you're getting better each essay. But I would argue that you know it's equally important um, to find out why you're getting certain questions wrong and what are the types of mistakes you're making. So work on all of that, and I look forward to seeing you all next time.